All right, so I'm going to go back to, all right, so now we want to um, add vehicle inputs. And in the example that you have, you'll have a spreadsheet. showing you um, the adjusted volumes for, um, for first a seating period and a, a, a peak hour that you will be simulating or working on. Um, in VSAM, it's always good to uh, load up the network because you want to make sure your network here reaches traffic levels that are just prior to congestion levels when you start your evaluation. So you want to load your network with some traffic for some time. In this example, there are guidelines uh, from the Washington uh, State Department of Transportation. That's very similar to the Federal Highway of, uh, Administration's uh, guidelines or some protocols too. It asks you to use the maximum of either a 10-minute seating period or um, so you can actually load the same amount of peak hour traffic to your network for just 10 minutes. It's a small network or twice the size of your network. Um, I believe these are the two most commonly used uh, ones. You can also uh, do some testing on seeding. Uh, you can do some evaluation and see when the overall number of cars in your network reaches a, um, a standoff or reaches a, or levels off. So when you start your simulation, especially when you have larger networks, vehicles have to travel from end to end, you can do some math to actually calculate the effective or the best seeding time that would represent congestion levels. Um, so you first start with 100% seed, maybe for half an hour or an hour, and then you look at the network performance, draw up a graph. It's a little bit more advanced. We're not covering it. For now, we'll just use a 15-minute um, or a 10-minute seeding period. So I'm going to put the uh, screen on the side. Oh, that's not working properly. And we'll have our inputs. So I'm going first to put in um, my um, traffic volumes uh, based on the uh, peak hour itself. So make sure you go all the way to vehicle inputs. Make sure it's active. We still, we skipped by the way, conflict areas and priority. You can, of course, set them up prior to having vehicles, but I would like to show you guys how to code vehicles and how we can progress to the setting conflict behavior first. So once you have vehicle inputs selected, I'll remove what I created right now. Make sure it's active, control, right click. A black line will appear. And I did screw up the screen again. So, um, so these are vehicle inputs that were coded previously. Don't worry about them. Uh, I can actually remove them for now. So I've coded the first uh, link. I'll name this eastbound approach. Country house below. So that's the link name that we assign. So this is how much traffic is coming from the east, sorry, from the west, driving eastbound. So that's 814 cars. So in the other sub menu that comes up, I'll maximize Visa. I'll put my volume is 814. So you put first the total number of cars coming in from all directions in the network, from the west here, the eastbound. You do the same thing for the westbound, how many cars are coming in. The sum is 1294. Go for it. And westbound approach. And uh, ta -ta -ta. We sent 1294, so back to it. Same thing, northbound. And check how many cars. 1051. Okay. 
Likewise, sound and and that's one of Okay, and you can do the same thing, like I'm gonna zoom into this one. Of course, you can right click zoom to any uh, network element that uh, you code. Um, and I'll just name this northbound and other one southbound, which is from the other direction. Now we have input the traffic demands, but cars don't know where they're going. So they'll literally go random directions. So if you want to see how the simulation looks like, uh, first, of course, I did not. Um, I just modeled the peak hour. Um, what I'm missing now is to model the uh, seeding period. So I need to assign a separate time frame. Um, to do that, I'll go to um, actually base data. Um, da, 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 and distributions, it's not time. Uh, apologies. So go under base data and under time intervals. Uh, switch the area behavior time field to vehicle inputs. And add a new one. So I'll add first, let's say I want to add a 900 second seating period, that's 15 minutes. And from uh, minute 15 all the way to next, that's my uh, end of simulation. Uh, if you want to simulate a 15 minute seating period or a loading period plus one hour simulation, the next step that you want to do is go under simulation, go to parameters, and change the simulation period. The default should be 3600 because this is the previous example that was done. Uh, so previously this was 3600, my apologies. That's what the default in this would look like. Um, in your parameters, change it to the sum of what you want. So first 15 minutes, 900 seconds of loading time, and then one hour of simulation to evaluate your results. So I'll change that to 4500 um, seconds. Click OK. Now, again, we have vehicle inputs. We do not have them set to turn or do anything. So we'll just play and see how it looks like. Save the changes, yes. And you can reduce the speed. Um, how do I do that? If then my, unfortunately, my other keyboard is not working properly. But yeah, if you have a plus sign, you can increase the speed of your simulation. If you had the negative sign, you can actually slow it down to a point of almost there stopped. So um, click the plus again. and minus will reduce them. Uh, typically, what you see down here, the 1.5, and um, typically it's around two without the plus sign, if I hit the plus sign again. Oh, my computer is not performing uh, well. Oh, there we go. So I'm hitting the minus sign now. Your simulation is 1.6 times real time speed. This is a real-time factor at the bottom of your screen. Um, to your left, this is how many seconds have elapsed, and this is how many vehicles are in the network at that specific second, or 0.1 second, and the 1.6 is a real-time factor. So these cars are, uh, the solution that you're seeing is 1.6 times real-time, uh, real-life speed. You can increase it or reduce it. The bigger the network, the, um, more difficult it is to actually get higher speeds uh, in terms of simulation. But as you can see, um, you'll have cars hitting each other. You will have, uh, of course, they're following the speed rules and everything, but they're going in almost any direction at this point. So I'll stop the simulation. The next step is to assign the movements to where they should go. So if you go back to the Excel spreadsheet, uh, well, first thing, um, what we did not do is we did not reduce the seating time to actually, or the seating percentage uh, to 80% of the actual volume. Typically, seating is done with the um, actual peak volume just to get the intersection going. So we'll keep it that way in this example. But if you want to reduce uh, your vehicle inputs by time intervals, go to each vehicle input. You can select 
how much is your hourly rate? Don't be confused, by the way, by the number here. This number is an hourly rate. Now, VISA reads vo static volumes as vehicles per hour. If you're working with dynamic assignment, it's just number of vehicles. So this is 814 vehicles per hour in a 15 minute period. So the actual number of cars that actually is assigned is going to be quarter of the volume. Is that clear? So for now, you can, you can actually lower it. If 80% if of your traffic is, let's say, um, around 750, you can edit the seeding period to 750. But in this example, we'll keep seeding and peak hour volumes to be the same. Nicely, oh, uh, of course, if you, do, if you want to avoid editing also the um, actual peak volumes, make sure it's not continuous input. So this becomes, again, 814. But that's really about it. But most of the time, and for the sake of your projects, use for seeding the exact same uh, peak hour volume. It's just used to progress traffic and get them to that point, just pre-peak uh, uh, point, just before you start your evaluation. And for most of your networks, a seeding time of 10 to 15 minutes should be appropriate. So the next step would be assigning turns for cars. So make sure Vika Roots is active. Left click it, right click from point A, uh, control and right click from point A. Let's say I want to assign how much cars are turning left. Go to this thing here. So this is the number of cars turning left. VSEM is very interesting. It may screw up um, the way you assign your routes, but in this case, it understood that it forces, or this is how your connectors make a difference. If uh, the first thing, it, it actually forced left turners to use that specific link. So left turners will never come from um, the actual connector, the two connectors here. This is common, but really this is not space for cars to be able to do uh, any turns, and they are still going to be forced to this connector that you've drawn. Your left turning cars will then queue up in those two left turns. Follow the link, make sure it's coded correctly. That's perfect, but this is not right. What, what can I do to uh, edit um, this uh, mess coding? You can click outside. Oh, well, actually, before even clicking outside, it's for the sake of uh, just making sure we're doing things uh, quickly, you can draw through and draw the um, right also by left clicking. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, just left clicking. When you double click outside, now, you're out of the edit mode and big roots. I want to now examine this route and edit it the same way I see fit. So click on the actual, make sure of course you're still active in big roots under network objects. Click on that specific route. I want to examine the left turn. So the route is proper so far. This is incorrect. Cars are not going to go to the taper. So control, right click at the beginning, just before that point, Right click after that point and then click a supply point here. So all that you're doing is holding control and right clicking, similar to how you create supply points and links. And then I'm going to, so what I'm adding here, I'm fixing the point I want to, um, my edits to start from, and I'm fixing the point where I'm ending where my edits are. The reason I do that is if my roots are going elsewhere, I don't want to change whatever is outside these two bands. If you don't do that and directly uh, create a spline point in the middle and move it, you're going to lose anything you did. If you edit something here, or if you edit like, something afterwards, you're gonna lose that. So the best way, create a, uh, some balance where you're gonna make your edits. Um, so I'm going to make my edits from this point to this point and by really dragging this guy here. That fixes your route. Do the same thing for your through. If you click two, always try to be consistent on how you draw things. So um, if I always start with left to right, I always keep my way consistent. So the order of creation for routes is the same. If I want to filter specific routes in an Excel spreadsheet, I know that subroute. Number one, any look if you have one, two, three, four routes, 
any root of these, some root number one is always a left term, and I can filter that in a spreadsheet or something and uh, do some QEQC on networks and so on and so forth. I'm going to do the same thing for two movements. So I'm going to fax this one point at the uh, beginning of where I want my edits to be at the end, one in the middle where the edits are happening, and just shift things and so on and so forth. We'll do the same thing for right. Uh, so right turn, they got into the three lanes. It's incorrect to force traffic back up again. So I'm going to do the same thing here. And that fixed the route. So this is just fixing how the route acts, behaves, and so on and so forth. If you want to be neat, you can always name your routes. Um, I typically name the route, but I do not name the subroutes because I know by numbers what they look like and what they mean. Now, once you're done, it's time to input how much traffic is going uh, through each turn. So, uh, one thing to note is, is that VK roots are relative in VSUM. So, if you put one, 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 that means that the vehicle input that you have here, 814 cars, will be split equivalently between three approaches 33.333 uh, going left, the same amount going through, the same amount going right. In reality, what we try to do, and for the sake of uh, completeness and properness as well, we try to make sure that these match the exact volumes. So my volumes are 172, 511, 132. So I'll put 172 again, 172, 512, and the third one was, oh, 511, the third one was 132. Now, I know that exactly out of my 814 cars, exactly that's what, what's going to happen. 172 will be turning left. Uh, although it's relative, I like always to code the exact number of cars because relative or not, it will match. And if I'm reviewing your networks, I can easily go to the link itself and check how much traffic is being added. So I can actually right click, show and list and add a graphic parameter, or sorry, add a new aspect or parameter to show me the sum of routes that are passing through that connector. So if I want to do that, I can go to static vehicle routes, sum, relative flows, zero to max, and put that in, click OK. Now I know that you guys coded in this link 172 cards. So this is really good for actual professional use because you want to make sure you review your network, you pass it by to an independent reviewer, they'll be reviewing your inputs because bad inputs means garbage outputs at the end of the day. 